Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be focusing on solving systems of equations using the substitution method. Please take out your math notebook and write down the title and the steps for solving systems of equations using substitution. Pause the video now until you're done writing these steps. Please write example 1 into your notes. We're going to follow the steps that you just wrote down. Step 1 said if needed, isolate one variable. Okay, I have to make a choice with my two equations, which of the equations would be easier to solve for one variable. It looks to me like the top equation here would be very easy to solve for h. So using my knowledge of solving equations, if I want to isolate h, I need to get rid of 4g. I'm going to subtract 4g because that's my inverse operation, and I'm going to do that on both sides. That'll cancel the 4g's on the left out, leaving me with h equals negative 4g plus negative 1. My second step says substitute the value of that variable into the other equation. That means we're going to take this value of h and substitute it into our second equation in place of h. So 2g will remain 2g plus 3 times that value, negative 4g plus negative 1, is equal to negative 13. Again, using my knowledge of solving equations, I'm going to have to do the distributive property. So 2g plus negative 12g plus negative 3 is equal to negative 13. I'm going to combine like terms. Combining my g's will give me negative 10g plus negative 3 equals negative 13. Okay, to get rid of that negative 3, I can either subtract negative 3, which really means add positive 3, canceling those out, and I now have negative 10g equals negative 10. One more inverse operation, divide by negative 10, gives me g equals 1. Okay, we just completed step three, which was solve the equation to find the value of the variable. We just solved and found that the value of g equals one. Step four, use that answer to substitute into the other equation to calculate the other variable. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to this guy. I'm gonna put one in place of g so I can find h. h is equal to negative four times one plus negative one. That gives me negative 4 plus negative 1, so h equals negative 5. Step 5 is to write our solution as an ordered pair. Now one thing to note here, when we're not using x and y, or even if we are using x and y, we always want to write our ordered pair in alphabetical order. That means whichever letter comes first in the alphabet is going to come first in our parentheses. So g comes before h alphabetically, so I'll write my ordered pair as 1, comma, negative 5. And that's our solution. Okay, please write example 2 into your notes. And our first step is to isolate one variable. When I look at these two equations, the second equation, the y term, does not have a coefficient. There's no number hanging out in front of it. That means it's going to be easy to solve for y, so that's what I'll do first. I'm going to rewrite that equation as 2x plus negative 1y is equal to negative 5. And now I'll start doing some inverse operations to get y by itself. Okay, I'm going to subtract 2x first on both sides. That'll cancel out the 2x's on the left, leaving me with negative 1y equals negative 2x plus negative 5. Okay, I still need to divide by negative 1, and that means each term will get divided by negative 1, canceling out our negative 1's, and we will get y equals 2x plus 5. Okay, step 2, substitute the value of that variable into the other equation. So I'm going to substitute 2x plus 5 in place of y in our other equation. Okay, so we will substitute it up here negative 4x plus 2 times 2x plus 5 is equal to 6. Okay, using my knowledge of solving equations, 
I know I need to use the distributive property first. So negative 4x plus 4x plus 10 equals 6. When I combine my like terms, I get 0 plus 10 equals 6. 10 equals 6. Now, remember that when, both, when all of our variables cancel each other out and what's left over is not equal to each other, that means that this is no solution. Okay, that means there is no ordered pair that will work in both of these equations at the same time. Okay, please write example three into your notes. Again, step one, isolate one variable. I'm guessing that you probably have an idea of which equation is going to be easiest to solve for one variable. And I'm going to go with the second one, solving for a. So all I need to do is subtract 3f on both sides, which will cancel these out, and a is now isolated. I'm going to say that a is equal to negative 3f plus 7. Our next step is going to be to take that value and put it in place of a into our first equation. So we will take negative 3 times that a value, which we said was negative 3f, plus 7, plus negative 9f, equals negative 21. And again, first thing we'll do is our distributive property. That's going to give me 9f plus negative 21 plus negative 9f equals negative 21. When I combine my f's, 9f plus negative 9f gives me 0. 0 plus negative 21 equals negative 21. Oops, I don't need to double negative in there, do I? And that means I get negative 21 equals negative 21. Now, if you remember, when all of our variables cancel each other out and what's left over is equal to each other, that means we get infinitely many solutions. Okay, remember from when we were doing graphing, that literally means that our two equations in our system uh, are exactly the same line. And so we could list an infinitely many number of ordered pairs that are on that line that will work in both of these equations. All right, good luck, everybody.